is a grip I really like to use because it helps me anchor, but it's just like I'm holding it like a pencil. The other one is I'm using my finger here to kind of create an anchor. Is it burn? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I'm about fading out the sides and the back and maybe get a bus cut. Cut that it's top like, off? Yeah, cut the top off. Alright, it's kind of... It's awkward. It's at an awkward length to, you know, maintain and look good. It is. Are you ready to be more consistent? Are you ready to have more fun with cutting hair than ever? I've literally detailed all six phases in this haircut. Well, we didn't have to use the phase three on the top because he didn't get scissors on top. And we didn't have to use clipper over comb because we used a clipper on top. But we went through every bit of this cut and it will make you more consistent and a better barber if you watch all the way to the end. Enjoy. All right, you guys, this is your first checkpoint. You wanna make sure that your skin line is good all the way around the head. Uh, make sure that it's even on both sides and then you're good to go on to the next part of phase one Which is gonna be the electric shaver. We're gonna take the electric shaver up till we get close to this line Then we're gonna start flicking away. Check it out Our goal here is to not have a line between skin and our trimmer line Alright you guys, we're about to get started with the blend here, but before I do that, um, I just want to put a little bit of hairspray on the edge. Uh, this is going to help it set in place. And don't be cheap with it, don't be cheap, give it some. I'm going to push this hair down. Uh, more than likely I can tell by the way some of these waves are, I'm probably going to do a front fade on this one. Uh, but first, I want this edge to be held nice and tight together with that hairspray. So now, we got the top cut, we got the sides cut. We got the skin done, the line put in. Let's begin the blend by putting the clipper in the open position. And we're gonna set our first line in. We're gonna keep it the same. We're gonna travel around the full head. Just like before, we're gonna check. We're gonna make sure that the line uh, that I put in is the same on both sides. I like what I see. And we're gonna move to the next step, the number one guard, and we're gonna put it on, and we're gonna go two clicks open. Boom, boom, that's it. So that's about halfway. We're gonna put another guideline in, all the way around the head. That's it for that step. Now we're gonna move to the one and one half. And I'm gonna do the same thing, just two clicks down. And we're gonna put our final uh, guide in here. This is gonna be kind of going up and off the head. And my hope is that this step blends the sides and connects it to the top, just in the parietal ridge area. This hair's got waves in it. We could come down with the grain. Because we did the top with a number two closed. We can come down with the grain. And you're gonna see if that's gonna help blend in some of that area. So I'm gonna turn the two clicks on this side. Just letting the clipper glide off of the top of the head. Very easy with this big wide blade. Uh, the one on one half for the game of dubs is the best. 
One thing you're gonna notice with, with some real fine hair is you're gonna notice that even though I skipped a lot of steps, a lot of this blend is already starting to come together. That's because he doesn't have as much hair on this side of his head. Uh, the density is a little bit lower. On this side of his head, he's got a little bit more hair, uh, which means that we're gonna have to work these steps just a little bit more. But it's, it's something to keep in mind when you're dealing with fine hair. We've done everything we can do as far as putting in our guidelines, and it's time to start attacking the skin line, and let's start working our way up. We're gonna get rid of all three of these little lines. All right, so I'm gonna begin with this fully closed. This is a Gamma Rebel, it's zero gap. It's gonna cut really close, and more importantly, it's gonna help you get out that line. So with this in the fully closed position, now I'm gonna flip. I'm just going to flip a little bit at that line and we'll see what happens. Click up, one click. Repeat the process. Click up again. Notice how with this thumb I'm stretching the skin, but I'm also letting it go back. Because uh, you can stretch the skin and you'll make the blend perfect, and then when you let it go, a lot of times it won't be perfect so you know stretch the skin at first and then try to refrain from stretching too much all right i just hit the last click and we're about back open again and now we're all the way back open like that there's gonna be a little bit to clean up with the trimmer but that's okay we're gonna to go to the half guard so for the half guard we skipped it right well we're gonna put it back on and guess what we're gonna go two clicks and we're going to try to remove this portion of that line Two clicks again, and that's gonna get out most of this line. It's possible you might have to open this, uh, you might have to close it a little bit. Now, these are just guidelines. You move it as you need, as you see fit. So now I'm really lightening my hand pressure, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. Very easy to make mistakes towards the end of your blend. up all the way. I'm just using the corner. All right, we got shears. We can use shears to help blend the rest of that. Uh, but let's focus on this bottom part now. So I like to go back with the trimmer sometimes if this happens. And uh, just try to chip away at the line just a little bit. So now I like to grab a taper blade. Now this is your best cleanup blade. This is a really forgiving blade, and it can hit some of those lengths uh, that you weren't able to hit before. So I'm just pretty much using this on the corner, and I'm just using it to lighten up any dark spots that I don't like, and to adjust the blind and just, you know, get away. You guys gonna notice this side is gonna be a little different because this is the side that's a little thinner. Uh, you're gonna notice some of it's gonna be easier and some of it's gonna be harder. 
So we're going to attack it the same way. Clip her in the closed position. All right, so I was able to get rid of a lot of that line with only putting it in the closed position. I didn't have to open it up at all. And uh, because the line is, is fairly gone, I'm gonna leave that be. I'm gonna move over to the back and do the same thing. Usually a little bit more hair. Most clients will have a little bit more hair in the back of their head. I'm gonna open it. Keep opening it. Okay, so we're gonna go with the half guard. The half guard could also be referred to as the zero guard, uh, but you're gonna notice they're gonna measure at 1 16th. And again, we're gonna go two clicks, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit that step just a little bit. fine tune it a little bit with some shear over comb. Uh, I typically like to do this with the hair with it, with it wet, but I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit with the dry because I don't wanna wet my hair, I still gotta do my front edge of it. So we're looking to roll that comb out. And uh, more or less, I'm just looking to kinda get rid of some of them dark spots. Texturizing shears. This could also be your friend. All right, let's start the edge up. He's got a really good edge. Uh, so I usually try to look for the high side and the low side. I like to start on the low side. Um, if, if neither one could be determined, it really doesn't matter where you start, but it looks like this side's a little bit lower. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of start over here. And we got a lot of overhang. So you know, it looks like I'm taking off some, but it's, it's really not that much. I always try not to cut into the interior too much uh, on my client's head. So that was after the first pass. You're never gonna get it perfect your first your first pass, uh, but that's actually pretty damn close. So now I'm just gonna keep refining it, getting all them hairs that are sticking out, anything that's causing my edge up to not look perfect. I'm gonna keep fighting with it and finagling with it so it looks good. This is a grip I really like to use because it helps me anchor, but it's just like I'm holding it like a pencil. It allows me to kind of put both, I'm resting my, my palm on his nose and then my fingers too. So I could like really be precise in how I'm bringing this trimmer down to his head. The other one is I'm using my finger here to kind of create an anchor. And that's good. And then, you know, one of the other things too is like, if you're not careful about how high you got your client or how low, you could be making it harder on yourself too. So if he's pumped up way too high, it's hard to use this hold. Uh, in that case, it might make more sense to go for the pencil hold. Little secret that a lot of barbers don't think of when it comes to the edge up, but it's using this pair of shears. My shears come from Shear Police. Love the company. They're the bomb, you could use Coast Eddie, Code Eddie, you could save 10%. Uh, but I use, the, I use the corners of the shears 
I use the shears to shape up the corners to make them really sharp. I don't know why a lot of people don't do this, but they don't. So now for the front fade a little bit. I'm gonna open this up. I got the one and one half. And we're gonna see if we can get just a little bit off of the front to help that edge sort of stand out a little better. I did some of it with the shears. I have it fully closed. I'm going to open it and I'm going to go back a little deeper. So if you look close, you can see I only tapped into his hairline a little bit. That's the area that I'm going to have to use the razor on. But that's why I'm telling you guys. Alright, I got this Essence razor. Super easy to hold. It's very wide. It's got this great long tang. And you guys can use the code Eddie for 10% off if you like it. You guys will see a lot of people do this stroke here. It's very, very easy to do with this razor due to the length of the tang. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable doing this stroke, which it, it is kind of a dangerous stroke because there's nothing stopping you from slipping too deep into the hairline, uh, it's a little easier to come around and just pull up. And you just have a lot more control when you pull versus when you push. Like you guys ever do any work in like the garage with, when you're using a ratchet and, and you push really hard, bang, you bust your knuckle? Well, that's why I always try to pull because you'll never bust your knuckle when you're pulling, no. usually. Okay guys, this is before enhancement. We're gonna spray a little enhancement in there. We're gonna make it look good. Sort of just shape, shape it up. Especially with waves, man, because one day they might lay, lay one way, one day they might lay a little different. Uh, so I try to get them ones that are gonna stick out and make my cut not look good. I try to get all them ones. You'll see some people using electric shavers in this step come out as fast as I thought. <laughs> Just a dab will do you, they said. We'll put a little bit of mousse in here. Get these waves to activate again. Get all the hair that should be laying down, laying down right. All right, so I put the diffuser on here because that's going to stop this hair from getting frizzy and messing up my product. Uh, this is the XL. It's a super powerful, light, tiny little blow dryer. But I just want the heat, so I turn it down to about medium, and uh, that's all I want. Okay, guys, in this case, I'm going to use Onyx Black from Tomb 45. I think this is the best uh, hair color to put in your guns. And this little auto lock gun, it's really, really good. I've been using it for a while, and I'll put the link in the description to this and, and the Zoom 45 as well. But all we gotta do with this, it's pretty idiot proof, man. All you do is you dump it in your gun. And that's it, man. We're good to go. Now, the next thing I like to do, I'll take like a neck strip or anything really, it doesn't matter. And uh, I wanna spray, and I just wanna make sure it's not splattering because I usually clean out my gun with alcohol, so I want to get rid of that alcohol too. So now it's ready to shoot, and uh, we're ready to enhance the edge a little bit. So what's nice about these, these color cards is I can put this right on that corner, and I can really get that corner. I'm not looking to put a ton. I don't want it to look super unnatural. Put my corners to look sharp. And that's it. People like to debate a lot about like whether they like to use fibers or uh, Zoom 45. 
I, I really think fibers are kind of useless for the client's sake because they just blow right away in the wind, whereas this can actually last a couple days if he doesn't scrub too hard. Um, it can actually it can actually hold up a couple days, so it's a much better thing. Like if you got like an event planned or something like that, you want to look nice. It's the way to go. I'm gonna hit the top, fill in a little bit of these these spots and the edges. I just got extra color, so I pretty much just want to run it out of the gun because uh, I'm not gonna put it back. So. I'm try darkening up the top a little bit. Be just about out. But it's just so important that you clean your gun afterwards, you guys. So run it out of color, make sure it's clean, and you're not gonna have no problems. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up having problems. Does it burn? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yep. It will. Uh, this is aftershave chrome. This shit's actually pretty awesome. <laughs>